Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to talk about different failure modes for a t-stop that we went through the introduction in the previous video. When it comes to failure modes, we have three modes of failure if prying force may develop. Let's go through it. Now we are familiar with t-stop and if we look at the t-stop from the side we have bolts here connected to the other component it can be end plate it can be foundation whatever it is uh, we have bolts and assume that this uh, web of the profile is under a uh, tension and uh, we are not dealing with the connection component for now just let's have it this way whatever it is it doesn't matter it can be end plate foundation another profile similar uh, dimensions we are just talking about the bolts and also this uh, flange which we name it as a t-stop so what would happen if you have a very very strong bolt so bolts are very sturdy they are very strong and they are just in place and the flange thickness might be the weakest part then if you look at the option that might happen and if you remember we had a definition of the distance m and for now let's just take this as n value we will come back to this later in other videos how to determine n so now uh, due to symmetry of the t-stop in terms of bolts in both sides ft will be divided by two and we can assume that in one side we have ft divided by two then here we have the flange after that we have the hole of the bolt and then the rest of the flange so here uh, we can see that we might have a washer and then the head of the bolt if we have a very strong bolt then it is just in place and it cannot move it's protecting the free edge of the flange as a result the failure by increasing uh, this ft divided by two happens when the system starts to be plastic in both ends what does that mean it means that when we are increasing ft then these two points will start to become plastic let's have a look on the 3d model of this with just one bolt Let's sketch it in a bigger size to show that it's quite uh, strong. Then the failure might happen in a way that here we have a plastic failure and here also we have a plastic failure. This is L effective or sigma L effective. And then we have two plastic hinges by increasing the force as it is uh, increasing the moment. So we are increasing the force and then the failure would happen just in the M side of the flange. It means that the bolt is quite strong and it's protecting the free end of the flange. So nothing is happening that way. It will be under prime force for sure. We will come back to that later in this video. So now the failure would happen this way. You will have a free side in the N side which is completely fixed and you have the other side which becomes plastic so then we have one plastic hinge here one plastic hinge here representing this line and representing this line so then the failure will be something like that because now it is uh, completely plastic in both ends and it starts to rotate the force applied to here is ft divided by two the force in the bolt will be f bolt and also you need to consider that as far as it's completely untouched you will have some kind of compressive stress here so in other words if it is not moving then you should have some kind of this area to be under compression typically in eurocode it is uh, sketched as only one force here as q so if you look at the presented uh, a sketch in Eurocode we can see that Q is always uh, in the tip not not as a distributed load so here we can see that Q is representing the uh, prime force so here is 
how we write down and here is the deformation of the failing part and we can determine what kind of force we can apply if this kind of mode would happen so in both ends that the plastic hinge is uh, forming we have mpl mpl and how to calculate this mpl coming back to the cross section that we have this is our cross section the width is l effective or sigma l effective and the thickness conservatively is taken as tf or the t of the part for this case the flange thickness so m plastic is always calculated according to y times w plastic and w plastic for a rectangle cross section is the width times the height s square divided by 4 so as a result m plastic will be 0 0.25 tf a square L effective times M times Fy. Coming back to Euro code, the given equation, we can see that uh, it's it's the same. 0 0.25 L effective Tf a square Fy divided by gamma M0 as the partial factor. So the idea is uh, just becoming plastic in the point of failure. So now for this case, let's calculate uh, T according to M plastic. If this is point A, point B, and point C, I take a moment by respect of B towards left. So here M plastic plus M plastic minus FT divided by two times M because this distance represents M equals to zero as a result t in mode one will be 4 mpl divided by m so if we go through euro code and check the given equation for one method in table 62 we can see the given equation exactly the same 4 mpl mode one times rd 4 mpl mode one divided by m the same equation it, and it comes from this explanation that we went through what else here might be important is the q if you want to calculate what kind of uh, uh, prime force you have so the mpl will be also in the other side as far as it is uh, bailed or it is plastic right now so now sigma m about point b equals to zero this time towards right so then q times this distance is n q times n minus mpl should be zero as a result q will be mpl divided by n and then if you are interested to determine force of uh, the bolt i can put it here by a simple sigma equation in y direction sigma force in y direction will be zero as a result ft divided by two plus q minus f B will be zero as a result bolt force will be ft divided by two plus q so these are happening when you have a very strong bolt and the flange of the uh, bolted component is the weakest part now let's assume that uh, the bolt is the weakest part let's go through the next page so if the bolt is the weakest part then you have a very a strong flange of the connection as a result, it can be assumed that the flange is quite uh, strong and, and with increasing the force, the bolts fail first. So if we look at it, to exaggerate and understand it better, I will sketch a, a little bit thicker flange and then very light bolt. So now if you apply the force, it doesn't matter what kind of supporting element we have. So then the, the, the flange is quite strong and it cannot bend. As a result, the bolts are bailing first. So this, this mode is called uh, mode 3, which means that the failure will happen by failing of the bolts. So in that case, Ft will be the summation of F bolts. There is no prime force. If you increase the force, then it will lift up. So then... The deformation will be something like that and the bolts will fail the same also in the euro code the same table mode 3 is given as the summation of ftrd ftrd is the 
volt uh, force resistance. So this is called mode three. The first one was mode one, and then something between is always mode two. It means that uh, the bolts are not very weak compared to the flange. The flange is not very weak compared to the bolts. So a kind of interaction might happen something between mode one and mode three, which is called mode two. In that case, you have a moderate flange and a moderate bolt. Now, if we apply the force here, T, then it starts to interact between the flange and also the bolt. So it means that the bolt is not resisting the flange not to rotate from its uh, website. So the deformation will be something like that. Still, we have prying force, but the prying force is not distributed from the center of the bolt towards the edge. It is just on the edge representing that, okay, there is something which is preventing the system to lift. So in this case, only one uh, plastic hinge will form at the connection of the flange to the web. So here is the plastic hinge. And so let's uh, sketch the mathematical or theoretical model. Here we will have bolt force. Here we have prying force. This will be Ft divided by two. And to prevent, we have only one plastic hinge, which is here. So we have MPL. The distance is M and N. So now we can write down the equation to calculate the uh, FT. So now if this is point A, point B, and point C, sigma MC equals to zero, uh, minus FT divided by two times M plus N plus MPL plus FB times N. Important. This FB, you might have three bolts in one side you might have two bolts in one side. As a result, it is better to be written that this is sigma volt divided by two times n. Sigma volts uh, are the summation of all bolts as far as we are considering half of the T stops. So it will be sigma F volt divided by two, then equals to zero. Then T from this equation can be determined. So it will be uh, two MPL, plus sigma or n times sigma f volts divided by m plus n. The same equation given in Eurocut. 2 MPL plus n times sigma FTRD representing the mm, bolt resistance and then m plus n. Now Q can be determined by a simple sigma bending moment about point B. So in this case, MPL plus Q times N minus FT divided by two times M equals zero. Then Q can be calculated FT divided by two times M minus MPL divided by N. So after that, uh, and also F bolt will be the uh, resistance of each bolt. Now let's have a summary of what uh, kind of modes we might have. Mode number one, we have a weak flange considering the thickness of the flange and we have a strong bolt. In this case, the failure would happen in the uh, flange. So then the mode should be something like that. And we have mode number two, which we have a moderate flange and bolt. So in this case, the failure will be failing of bolts and also the flange in the connection to the web. And mode three, which we have a strong flange and we have a weak bolt. Then the failure will be just failing of the bolts. So it comes up without significant deformation of the flange. So it just, uh, the bolts will fail. That was the end of this uh, video. I hope you enjoyed this uh, explanation and uh, understanding how uh, different modes are determined according to Eurocode. In the next video, we will go through a, a numerical example for uh, calculation. Also, we will use MATCAD to uh, accelerate our calculation and save the time. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.